you've probably had an idea of what a day is since you were very young. You knew that daytime was when the sun was in the sky, and nighttime came after the sun had set. And you had all these other times besides nighttime and daytime, which I'm not going to go into in this video. When the sun rose in the morning, set in the evening, and then rose again after 24 hours, you knew that one day had gone by. When you got older, to say, elementary school age, you probably learned that the sun doesn't actually rise and set, but that the spin of Earth on its axis makes it appear to do so. The part of the planet we are on moves into and out of sunlight as Earth makes one rotation on its axis. So now you know as an adult that one Earth day is equal to the amount of time it takes Earth to make one rotation on its axis. End of story, right? Well, not quite. What I've just described are actually two different types of days, which we define differently. The first one, involving the time from one sunrise to the next, is known as a solar day. The second, which involves the rotation of a planet on its axis, is known as the sidereal day. We measure this time according to the positions of the background stars. What you need to realize is that as Earth is rotating on its axis, it is orbiting the Sun simultaneously. Earth moves slightly less than one degree in its orbit around the Sun as it completes one rotation. In order for the Sun to appear in the same position in the sky after one rotation of Earth on its axis, Earth has to complete one more degree of rotation. As a consequence of this, the background stars appear to make a faster circuit about the sky than the Sun. Pick any star and watch it move across the night sky, and you'll notice that it rises or sets about four minutes earlier with each successive day. That means that Earth's sidereal day is 4 minutes shorter than its 24-hour solar day. We define the sidereal day as the true rotation period of the planet. Now, there's not too much of a difference between Earth's sidereal day and its solar day, but on some of the other planets, depending on how long their rotation rate is with respect to their orbital period, there can be quite a world of difference between these two measurements. Let's start out with the world closest to the Sun, Mercury. Mercury takes about 59 Earth days to rotate once on its axis, and it orbits the Sun in 88 Earth days. This is about one and a half times longer than it takes to rotate. What this means is that for every two orbits Mercury makes around the Sun, it rotates on its axis three times. This slow rotational speed and fast orbit combine to give Mercury a solar day of about 176 Earth days, twice that of its year. Suppose we situate ourselves between Mercury and the Sun and watch it over the course of its orbit. Notice that Mercury appears to stop and move slightly back as it's rotating on its axis. Now that's not Mercury itself doing that, in fact if I go over top of it and watch, you don't notice the effect as much. What's happening is that Mercury is moving around the Sun so quickly, and rotating so sluggishly, that the Sun illuminates the planet in this awkward manner. In some places on Mercury, you'd be able to see the Sun rise twice in one morning. Now on to the next planet, Venus. Venus takes 243 Earth days to make one rotation on its axis, but it takes only 225 Earth days to orbit the Sun. So Venus is the only planet whose rate of rotation is slower than its orbital period. In addition, Venus rotates backwards, so that a sunrise seen from it would happen in the west instead of the east. Again, the slow rotation of the planet and the quick orbit affect the length of time the sun is in the sky. On Venus, the length of the solar day is about 117 Earth days. We can relate the period of the solar day with the sidereal day with an equation, which varies slightly depending on the direction of the planet's spin. The solar day is equal to the product of the orbital period and sidereal day divided by the difference between the orbital period and the sidereal day. If the planet's rotation is retrograde, like Venus, the sidereal day is represented as a negative number. Plugging in the values for each planet's orbital period and rotation rate, we can observe how long a solar day is on each world. The giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, have very fast rotation rates, ranging from 10 hours to 17 hours long. However, they take quite a long time to orbit the Sun. Neptune takes nearly 165 Earth years to complete one orbit. Because of this, there isn't that much of a difference between their solar and sidereal days. 
with a long orbital period and a short sidereal day, you can pretty much just say that the solar days for these planets are equal to their sidereal days, except in the case of Uranus, which I will get to. First, I want to talk about how we measure the rotational periods of these planets. With the inner planets, determining their rotation rates are pretty easy. We bounce radio waves off their surfaces and use the time dilation to determine the speed of their rotation. None of the outer planets have solid surfaces to bounce radio waves off of, so we use another method. All of the giant planets have magnetospheres, as do a couple of the inner planets. Based on the assumption that the magnetosphere of a planet is generated somewhere within it, scientists use the rotation of the magnetic field as the rate of rotation for the planet. Thus, the rotation rates of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune have all been determined by this method. Back to Uranus, it has a lopsided tilt of 98 degrees to the vertical. Essentially, the north and south poles of the planet lie where you'd expect to find the equator. This causes the sun to illuminate the planet in a strange fashion. During the summer solstice on Uranus, the pole you're situated on would be in continuous sunlight for as long as 42 Earth years depending on what latitude you were at on the planet. During the winter solstice, the opposite would be true. You'd be left in dark for as long as 42 Earth years. It's kind of like in the northernmost regions on Earth during the summer and winter. Either you'd never see the sun, or it would never actually set. But imagine that for 42 Earth years. It would only be during Uranus's vernal or autumnal equinox you'd get to experience the planet's 17 and a quarter hour day everywhere. By the way, how do we determine which of Uranus's poles is the North Pole and which one is the South Pole? Well, if we use the right hand rule, something you'll use if you take physics, we define the north pole of a planet as the one which rotates counterclockwise when looking down at it from above. However, another convention has arisen from the International Astronomical Union, which states that the north pole of a planet is the one that lies above the plane of the ecliptic regardless of the direction of the planet's spin. So, your guess is as good as mine on this one. One last thing I should bring up is that a planet's rotational period may or may not be a constant value. With our own planet, earthquakes and the tidal effects caused by the moon have slightly altered our day by a few seconds over the years. Since 1972, the International Earth Rotation and Reference System service has had to add a few leap seconds to our coordinated universal time to accommodate for this. Some of the other planets have similar problems regarding their rotation periods. Saturn, for example, was found to have an internal rotational period of 10 hours and 39 minutes according to measurements made by the Voyager spacecrafts in the early 80s. When the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft went into orbit around Saturn in 2004, it found that the planet's rotational period had slowed down by about 6 minutes since then. Scientists didn't find it likely that Saturn's rotation had slowed down by that much in two decades. Instead, they believed that determining Saturn's rotation by the conventional method wasn't exactly as correct as they had previously thought. So, maybe determining a day isn't as easy as you think. How the sun moves through the sky and the positions of the stars aren't so set in stone after all. When you take into account all the little things that can influence that length of time, it can get a little more complicated as well. I guess the most basic thing to take away from all this is that when you want the most precise measurement of how many hours there are in a day, well, it depends on what you mean by day. Thank you for the day Those endless days, those sacred days you gave me I'm thinking of the day